In this video, we're going to take a look at Parker Penman Sapphire. Let's jump straight to the end with my opinion. I have to say I've enjoyed using this ink, but it doesn't live up to the hype that you tend to get from this ink. So for me, it left me disappointed at really no fault of the ink if people hadn't treated it with such reverence as the greatest ink that all inks should be weighed against. I probably would have enjoyed it much more, especially considering it took a great deal of effort. Not really. It was sent to me by a family member that had some and they didn't like it. So if this wasn't from uh, with such legendary status, as an ink, then it probably would have been a bit better to write with, but it can't even live up to its own reputation. I don't know that any ink could. I also didn't experience the sheen that people talk about with some of this. In fact, some of the inks out there meant to look similar to this. I see more sheen in the writing than I do from this one. I look at this and I see a very vibrant blue. I really, like I said, don't get to experience that sheen, not to say that it never shows up, just not like people make it out to be. And that left me a bit disappointed with this ink. And admittedly, being disappointed with it was my fault because it has so much around its reputation. The short of it is, I thought this was an important video to do because I've seen so many inks and then to be able to compare it and say, yeah, there are better blues out there might mean something to some people. I like to change things up by using a different pen each day. Today that pen is a Parker Jotter with a medium nib. It's inked up, used for a day, and used to take the notes for this video. To see how I arrived at that opinion, let's take a look at the first writing sample done on Claire Fontaine. Looking at the fine, we get no feather, no spread. We do get a bit of shading going on. Very nice shading in here, especially for someone who doesn't run to blues like me. The medium is much darker than the fine with no feather, no spread. It has shading coming through and you see it in the word sparks and you see it in the word fire. And there is a couple of tiny moments of sheen that really show up like on the E of fire or on the, where's the RS of roosters. So there are moments, but not like we had heard about them. Now that broad is the same tone as the medium with no feather, no spread, better shading, I think, than what we're getting from the medium because I think that to be a slight bit lighter or lighter flow than that medium pen, which is a very wet pen. Looking at the back of the page, we get no bleeding and minor ghosting. 
To have a range of experience with this ink, all of the writing samples are done with a Platinum 3776 with a soft fine nib. A Pelican P200 with a medium nib. A Fountain Pen Revolution Japer with the Fountain Pen Revolution Broad Nib. The next writing sample is done on Leustrom 1917 paper. Looking at the fine nib, we get no feather, no spread, little bits of shading, a light peppering throughout some of it, nothing really amazing, but not too bad, honestly. I can enjoy how it's there. Now, this paper means that we're not going to get any of the sheen here, and we don't, and I only mention it because that's what this ink is known for. The medium is much, much darker than the fine. With no feather, no spread, it still does have some shading. When you really look at it, you see lay starts lighter and gets darker, but we're talking about going from a dark to a very dark tone. I really like how this looks very dark here on this toned paper. The broad is a little bit lighter than the medium, but still much darker than the fine. With no feather, no spread, it does offer some shading throughout, which is fairly nice. And because of the absorbency of the paper, we get no sheening. Looking at the back of the page, we see that it's been quite aggressive where the pen was wetter, like on that medium, but it did not touch the page underneath. It does have an incredible amount of ghosting and probably enough to stop you from using the back of the page. I agree with Vita. There's a lot to learn by doing multiple chromatographies. The next writing sample is done on moleskin paper. Looking at the fine nib, we get no feather, no spread. We get some spots of shading that's going on. You see it in something, you see it in good, you see it in his, and buzzed. So we do get some fairly decent shading. The medium is much darker than the fine. It does have some tiny feathering going on, and that's the paper, which honestly, for as little feathering as we've seen on the moleskin to get some here, I'm a little surprised. We are getting some shading that's going on here, which isn't a ton, but isn't really enough to bring good note to. The broad is a little bit lighter than the medium with tiny feathers, not too bad, really tiny feathers. You see it a little bit in all though. You see it a little bit in could, but I don't see this being something to stop you from using this ink on this paper. It's not experiencing spread and we're not really seeing the shading come through on that broad nib.
Looking at the back of the page, we get a normal amount of ghosting and no bleed through. Resistance tests are done to see how this ink can be expected to perform on the page, and more importantly, how hard it may be to clean from your pen. This smear is allowed to dry for three days before testing it. And here we see the results of the resistance test. The next writing sample is done in a composition notebook. Looking at the fine nib, it's quite a bit lighter than we've seen on some other papers, which is normal for this paper. It has no feather, no spread. It does offer some shading throughout it. Not as much shading as we've seen on some others, even some more absorbent like the Loistrum. But there is little bits of shading here. The medium is much darker than the fine, really coming towards a tone for this ink that I prefer quite a bit more. I'm not experiencing feather, I'm not seeing any spread, and I'm not seeing any shading whatsoever. Now, I didn't expect to be seeing any sheen on this, and I didn't, so that's not a problem that it's not there. The broad is a little bit lighter than the medium with a couple moments of shading. In the CA of Cardano's, you see a tiny bit of feathering, but not something to really make an issue out of. Inside the O of Worthy, you see a little bit of feathering, but still not something to make a big deal out of. We have no spread. We have no shading whatsoever with this. I'm, I wasn't expecting the highest of things on this paper. Looking at the back of the page, we see that we get minor ghosting and no bleed through whatsoever. With over a thousand inks reviewed, let's take a look at some color comparables. Here is Ackerman's number five. Here is Graf von Faber-Castell Cobalt Blue. Here is Levenger Cobalt Blue. Here is Noodler's Bay State Blue. The next writing sample is done in a Mead Five Star Notebook. Looking at the fine nib, the first thought that I have is what a shame to be using this ink on this paper, but you know, it is just ink. It has no feather, no spread. It's performing fairly well. There are a couple of moments of shading, just a few. Not a big deal, but it is nice when it's there. Medium is significantly darker than the fine. It also brings with it some feathering consistently, tiny feathers, but consistently feathering. It has moments, only a very few moments of shading, not anything that really I think is that great. The broad is the same tone as the medium. It doesn't feather like the medium did. It doesn't spread. It doesn't have any shading. It's just blue.
looking at the back of the page, we get a normal amount of ghosting. We get no bleed through that touches the next page, but you probably aren't going to use the back of the page for, I would be afraid of losing both sides of notes. While it's nice to find other inks in the same color family, I prefer to find an ink that complements its color on the page. Here is a brown ink by KWZ, their Iron Gall Orange. Here is a magenta ink by Monteverde, their Gemstone Garnet. Here is an orange ink by Krishna, their Sunburst. Here is a red ink by Noodlers, their Fox. If you'd prefer different complement colors, then there's links to those different playlists down in the description. Or you can click on my face. That'll take you to my channel page. Then click on the playlist tab. Scrolling down, you'll be able to see all of the playlists that are here on the channel. The last writing sample is done on 20 pound copy paper. Looking at the fine nib, we get a lot of feathering, which we really expect on this paper. We do get a little bit of spread, which again, we expect. This is a Japanese fine nib that's writing, and it looks a little bit thicker than a Western fine. It does have some feathering all over it, not unexpected. It is giving us some shading, which is very nice. You see it in and in century and B in another. So it is coming across fairly nicely just on a very cheap paper. Now the medium has a lot of feathering and some of the feathers are rather large and obnoxious, making this look very blurred to write. Combined with that, the lots and lots of spread that this ink has on this paper, not particularly good. The broad has feathering, has spread, has no shading, just like the medium had no shading. This was not fun itself. When we look at the next page, I circled all the little spots where it did touch the page underneath. Now, it's not completely corrupting the next page, but it is making it hard to use that next page for having blue dots. And you see on the back of this page, we have a significant amount of ghosting, which is expected. And yes, we get bleed through that destroys the page underneath. So what nib and pen do I think is gonna give the best writing experience with this ink? I hope you got something out of this video, and if it leads to you wanting to try this ink when you purchase it, let the retailer know where you heard about it, whether it's me or any other channel. Thanks for watching.